that fiery Old Testament prophet, Isaiah. Fifty-nine, chapter fifty-nine. Now I got my uh, got my wires crossed just a little bit this morning when I mentioned that we're going to be speaking on a nation in crisis, and that we would look at two nations in parallel. That is a message that I've got that the Lord gave me on a nation in need. And that is out of the Old Testament, a parallel of Israel and the United States. So, so much a parallel that you'll find it hard to believe. And someday as uh, the Lord permits and that there's a need, I'll uh, speak on that here. But we're going to begin reading Isaiah 59, beginning in verse 1. We'll read 1 to 5, then we'll skip down to verse 12 through 15. Isaiah 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has or hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak in lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. viper. Verse 12, for our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us, for our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, And departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it. And it displeased him that there was no judgment. I believe in Ecclesiastes, and I I wrote this verse to um, uh, not long ago to uh, President uh, Trump and Vice President Pence, the same letter. And basically the gist of the letter was Ecclesiastes 8.11. And I'd like somebody, I can, I've got it memorized, but I'd like somebody to look it up, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, and read it aloud. Tuck, are you able to pull that up? Uh, probably not. Everything's in order. Do you have it? Okay. Is it because sentence? Okay. Why don't you stand up and just read it really aloud? do evil. Amen. Did you hear hear that? That is what America needs. Judgment. Our court systems need to operate right. They need to judge. There was a judgment made yesterday by the, I call it, and I'm sorry, I am a patriot. I love my country. But I call this the Mickey Mouse Court. The Ninth District is nothing but pure socialism. That's all it is. And they just ruled that No fence, no border, no wall can be built in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. They absolutely forbade it. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to cause a civil war or not. And then they're looking at 
the southern border of California as well. The Ninth Court is obviously uh, is in the unholy land, and that is California. And California is changing so fast and so radically wicked, literally, that uh, it, it's, if you want to see the direction our country will go without the Lord intervening, that is what you look at, basically. All right. So tonight we're going to speak on a nation in crisis, not a nation in need. We're not looking at a parallel between Israel and the United States. We're looking at the United States as compared to and given in Scripture. One by one, the lights of decency in America are being blown out across the nation as if they were candles blowing in a gentle breeze and the winds came up and snuffed them out. 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 18 says the following, And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye have chosen, which ye have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. When we have our election in 2020, I say this and I mean, I'm not political. I love my country. If, uh, if we had a bad president uh, who's in the office as a, as a Republican, and he is not bad, and we had a good, pre a, a good person running as a Democrat or an Independent, I would be all for that person if everything lined up in their life and everything was proper and good. But it's not that way. And if we do not get out and vote and prayerfully ask God to take and get a hold of our nation and our country and the leaders of our land, then America is going to be a great ship in a sea, and it's going to be lost, and eventually it will sink. The prophet Isaiah warned a sinful nation, he warned, that their sins had created a barrier between them and their God so that he would not hear their prayers. They were praying to a brass guy, literally. Their prayers were tumbling back to them. Isaiah chapter 59 of our reading. Please notice again, verse 1 will begin down to verse 4. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid uh, his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to start looking in the outline. Point number one is the sin of the nation during Isaiah's day. And we can do somewhat of a comparison. The first of this is bloody hands. Isaiah 59, verse 2 and 3 again. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Now, let's look at that for a moment, and let's compare it to America. America has bloody hands, literally. The bloody hands has come from killing of preborn babies. And may I say to you that with some of the governors, the far-leaning left governors, such as Kumo and a few others across the land, out of Virginia and others, that... They're willing to kill a baby after the baby's been delivered. The umbilical cord is not cut. And the physician, if you want to call it that, takes the baby and snuffs out its life. They call that still under the guise and the umbrella of abortion. Now, someone tell us, at what point is a baby a fetus? Really, a fetus. A fetus is a, go ahead. Uh, 
That's right. As soon as life conceives in the womb, that and the and the embryo, the, the it is split and life begins to perk ahead. Well, that that's a baby. I don't have any idea what a fetus is. It, it sounds like a word that is a swear word in my book. I mean, I just see that and hear that word, and it's wicked and it's evil. So we, 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 we talk about preborn babies, but now we're in the case that babies. I mean, look, a baby, that if a baby is four weeks old um, from being born, and what's the term of a mother? Is that 39 weeks? 40 weeks. And you deliver a baby 36, 35, 36 weeks. Well, you can abort it. No, I can't. You can't. But a, an ungodly doctor will abort it. But if that baby, that lady, that mother went into hard labor and delivered that baby, that baby's going to live. The only thing is it's not putting on a lot of body fat in the last four weeks of life. It's going to be a little bit more lanky, and it's going to depend more than ever on its mother's milk and nursing to put on that body fat and that uh, weight that the baby needs. Since 1973, and it's something you definitely need to pray for, since 1973, the 73 de decision of Roe versus Wade, because of that, since that time, America is now killing about 4,000 babies now a day, not a week. That is atrocious. That is ungodly. It is wicked and is evil. So Nehemiah talked about bloody hands. But let's go on. He also talked about very heavily about lying lips. Notice verse 3 of Isaiah 59. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Now, America is suffering severely from a decline of basic honesty, as cited in an article from U.S. News and World Report. America is in declination from being honest. It is fleeing from it. The press lean far left, and they are fake. I don't care what the press says. I don't care what a fellow brother and sister may think. Press on the average for the majority are lying, fake press that have an agenda. Let's go for a moment and let's just look at the blasphemous, ungodly Karl Marx. Karl Marx wrote a 10 uh, manifesto, 10 points. And one of the points that he gave, of which our former president and now the party that is in opposition, and I'm telling you the way it is, are practicing that, is here's what it is. Tell the masses of the people a lie long enough, and they will begin to hear it, and they will finally begin to believe it. And if you watch the percentage of the votes and the polls that are changing, the more the lie is, t is propagated, you'll find the more the poll percentage in favor for ungodly socialism is beginning to come on, on a incline. It's going uphill. And that's wrong and that's, that's, that's wicked. Um, a former president practiced all 10 points, all 10, every single one of them. And he told lies. Enough that people will believe it. You will be surprised if his hands of our president is untied and the FBI and the Attorney General uh, uh, bar that if this will happen, the struggle, the struggle is getting more intense, but there should be a host of a multitude of people indicted because they've gone against the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution is founded upon Scripture. It's founded upon the Word of God. So here we have Matthew 5, 37. Listen to what Jesus says. But let your, your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. 
you see. So on our generation, we're calling evil good and we're calling good evil. And that's happened. Finally has happened. Don't want to see it. I find it abhorring. But you know, yet of that, you still pray for your uh, people that do not have the best, best interests of our country. The average person that does not have the best interest for America does not have the best interest for Florence Baptist Church and every gospel preaching church that is across this great land of ours. Be careful. Canada has continued switching to the left. So now that there are pastors and preachers on the airwaves originating from Canada cannot preach on the blood and cannot preach on certain aspects of Jesus Christ happening in Canada, can happen in America, will happen if God's people do not stand up and do what's right and pray and serve the Lord and be a blessing to people's lives. Wicked hearts, here's the third, Isaiah 59 and verse 4. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Listen to Ecclesiastes, not far from where you read, chapter 10 and verse 1. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Our society tells us that private morality can be disconnected from public service. The governor of Virginia has proved that. There are other people that have proved that. Immorality, it's catching up to them, but nobody's doing anything about it. So they feel that what we do in private can be totally disconnected from the oath to the Constitution that we made when we ran for an office, voted for the office by the American people, for the people, and by the people. In our society, public approval validates wrong behavior. Did you hear that? Public approval validates wrong behavior. Wrong One of the men that's running for president, I cannot pronounce his name, and maybe I'm going to get in some quicksand, but I'm going to wade right through it. Uh, what's his name? Buttigieg or something like that? Or, but he's a, he was a mayor, or is a mayor outside, out of Indiana, and he's running for president. He made no bones about it when he introduced his partner, his wife, which was a man. And that's how far our country is degenerating, literally. So we call evil good and good evil. And God, by the way, says homosexuality is abomination, is abomination. I'll not go beyond that, but it is abomination. So in our society, if a person's like, oh, his personality is just great. I look at him, listen to him, laugh. I mean, he's just story and his content is okay. I think I might, I might even vote for him. Public approval validates that person's wrong behavior. Just because he might have a personality or she that would take and radiate some kind of a false picture doesn't mean that in the background and in secret society of their life that they can live an abominable life because it will bleed into their decision. And a person with a black of, of sin, heart, cannot make right decisions and objective decisions for the people, by the people, and stand for the Constitution of America. And by the way, we need to return back where people need to put their hand on the Bible and they need to pledge allegiance uh, and to give the Hippocratic Oath of their office. And by the way, more doctors ought to be put on trial for lying about the hypocritical oath that they take when they abort babies. Amen? And that is just flat murder. That's all that is. 
Listen to Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Now that's our first point. Here's our second. What causes these conditions in a nation? What caused it in Israel? What caused it in America? It is a diet of deception. Look at and listen to Isaiah 59, verse 5. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. So here we have lies and philosophies that have been hatched out through the incubators of materialism, humanism, new ageism, and liberalism. This is what is incubating and changing the face of our nation. We are building a web of wickedness. Look at Isaiah 59 and verse 5. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs and that which is crushed beneath them out into a viper. All right? They weave the spider's web in three areas. Here they are. Pornography. Pornography in our country. Drugs and alcohol. Boy, the, the dev devastator of our nation, literally. Drugs are flowing through the border almost to the point now that it's acceptable. And then immorality. You have webcam pages that are just unbelievable, what you see in the news articles, that is not worth and you could not bear repeating it. So here we have now is the third item on what causes the conditions that our nation is experiencing. First, it was a, a diet of deception. The second is a web of wickedness. Third, the trashing of the truth. Did you hear that? The trashing of the truth. Now, if you would, look at Isaiah 59 and verse 12 to 15 again. And notice, for our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us, for our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood and judgment is turned away backward and justice cannot standeth afar off. For truth has fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Let me stop here for a minute. A thought comes about. When Pontius Pilate, when Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, and when Pontius Pilate stood before Jesus, because it's the judge now of the nation that is standing before the judge of all creation. But when he stood there and Jesus began to tell him of truth, what did Pilate say? What is truth? He mocked and laughed. And that's what we have today. What is truth? Well, first of all, when you stand for truth and against deception and wickedness, you become a bad guy in the eyes of many people. You really become a bad person in their estimation. In verse 15, Isaiah 59, Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And then there is a traffic jam of sorts when we look at some of these. Judgment and justice and equity cannot enter in to the system and the courts of our nation because truth is fallen in the streets. 
And that's what happened to Israel. That is what's happening, and it has happened in our nation. Isaiah 59 and verse 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth has fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Now, truth is not dead, but it has fallen in America. It is not dead, but it's fallen in the U.S. of A. The third point is now the importance of truth. First of all, God refers to the Bible as the word of truth. It is the word of truth. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the spirit of truth. Amen? When the day when you got saved, Truth entered in. Truth entered into your soul, into your heart. He came in, and you were filled with the Holy Ghost, the, the Spirit of God. You were baptized into the Spirit of God. And not weird things happened, but God began to empower you and change your heart and your mind and your thinking to glorify the Lord Jesus. God describes himself as truth. And then Jesus is the way, the truth, in the life. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. He's truth. The church is called the pillar and the ground of truth. Listen to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. And then the apostle John, you know who John was? You know, John was called and referred, when you get into the gospel of John, John was a very humble person. He really was. He loved the Lord Jesus. He loved his brothers in Christ that were disciples, the apostles. He loved the people and wanted people to be saved, but he loved the Lord Jesus. And when he was in the upper room and they were, and it was the last service, supper, where was John? He was that disciple that was leaning, laid his head on the breast of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here he is on the Isle of Patmos and he's writing Revelation by divine inspiration. Now, the Apostle John said in 3 John, uh, one four. I have no greater joy uh, than to hear that my children walk in truth. The greatest thing, uh, soul winning is wonderful, and it needs to be. It's the spearhead of the church. But one thing that is a blessing to your pastor is for him to hear that his people, his sheep, his children walk in truth. Amen. Walk in the light of the truth of the word of God. Walk in the light of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. The only way to defeat deception and wickedness is through truth. Truth always oppresses and defeats lies and deception. So here's our last point, very, very short. We must rededicate ourselves to the truth. Listen to John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You know what the word sanctify means? It means, well, let's see. If, let's say that this is your house, we're in your house. And let's say you got a lamp table, or maybe you got a table, a couch table or something out in front of the window. And what do you have embracing the center part of that? You've got a vase, and maybe it's full of beautiful flowers, and you just love that. And you think, boy, that would look better over at this other location. So you know what you do? You pick it up, and you set it aside, apart, for what you feel is a better thing. In essence, that's the same as sanctification. God takes you, and he sets you apart, special for himself, you see. He loves you. He fills you with his love and power and the love of his spirit. 
He says in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And then we have Proverbs 23, and verse 23 is our last verse. Buy the truth and sell it not. Hold on to it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Now, we have just seen a nation in crisis. Does that fit any nation that you know of? Does it? Pardon? All of them now. And it's amazing. I never thought, I never thought that I would ever see this day, this generation that I'm in right now, where America has descended to the level that it is right now. And America was raised up to be a light in this world, like Israel was. Israel, God said Israel apart in the land where the Canaanites were and others and the, Mo the Moabites and the Hivites and Jebusites and others so that they would become a lamp, a light. And so that people would come and they would come to the temple and they would hear the word of God. That's just like the Ethiopian eunuch in chapter 8. He was coming from Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, from the nation. He was the, the treasurer and he was coming to Jerusalem to hear and find and try to find God. He didn't. But coming back, Philip, that soul-winning deacon, led him to the Lord. And that's what we need in America. It'll help America like you'll never believe. But America needs people that are sanctified. Taken willingly and knowingly that God has set us apart, sanctified, for a special task. What is that special task? To be truthful. Tell the truth always. The truth will always penetrate. The light always penetrates into darkness. Always. I remember when I first got saved, I, I, I didn't realize how much scriptural truth it was when I would give it as a testimony as just a babe in Christ. But when I got saved, it was like walking into a dark closet and pulling the chain on the light or flipping the switch. And it was light all of a sudden and I could see everything. And suddenly I understood what uh, this room was all about and I could see everything in it. That's the way it was when I got saved. The light came into my life. And listen, people need the light. Be the light. Share the light. Give the light. Use truth, the word of God. It's the only thing with prayer that will save our nation. And God's people said, amen. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's bow our heads and let's thank the Lord tonight.